calendars. They are a staple of human civilization, having been used in various forms to track the passage of time since the dawn of civilization. But what if Kerbals had their own calendar too? What would their calendar look like and how would it work? For starters, however, we first have to decide what type of calendar we're actually going to use. There are two main types of calendars, these being solar calendars, such as the Gregorian calendar that you are probably most familiar with, and lunar calendars, such as the Islamic calendar, and even a loony solar calendar? For the sake of familiarity and simplicity, however, let's say we go with a solar calendar. What would our calendar look like then? Well, to start off, let's list what we already know. A Kerbin solar day is exactly six hours long, and in-game, each year on Kerbin lasts 426 days. In practice, however, Kerbin's actual orbital period is more like 426 days and 32 minutes. But what does this mean? Why is it important? Well, it means that in order to have a perfect 426 day year, we have to shave off these extra 32 minutes and 24 seconds. When we divide the number of seconds in a Kerbin day by this number, we get a value of roughly 11. So, in order to compensate for this, the Kerbals would need to have a leap year every 11 Kerbal years. However, simply having a leap year every 11 years is not enough. As Kerbin's orbital period is not exactly 426 and 1 11th solar days, but is instead slightly less. If we were to keep on having one leap year every 11 years, the gap between the number of days on the calendar and the actual amount of time that has passed will widen more and more over time. Like many things in KSB, however, this problem actually has a real-world parallel. Before we began using the modern Gregorian calendar that most of the world uses today, we used another calendar called the Julian calendar, which had been used in much of Europe since Roman times. This calendar was almost identical to the current Gregorian calendar, with one minor difference. It never skipped any leap years. Now, this may come as a surprise, but in our current Gregorian calendar, we actually skip a leap year during every year divisible by 100, the last time being in the year 1900. Now, I hear you saying, however, wasn't the year 2000 still a leap year? And indeed, it was, as unlike the year 1900, the year 2000 is divisible by 400, in which case the leap year is not skipped. To put it in more simple terms, if the year's number is divisible by 100, but not by 400, then the leap year is skipped. As a result of leap years never being skipped in the Julian calendar, over time, the gap between the date on the Julian calendar and the actual number of days that had passed widened more and more, until finally, in the year 1582, Pope Gregory XIII ordered the implementation of the Gregorian calendar. In order to make up the difference, 10 days of October 1582 were skipped, and the new calendar resumed as normal. Okay, that's cool and all, but how do we actually apply this in our Kerbal calendar? Well, referring to the spreadsheet, we can see that the discrepancy between the actual amount of solar days passed and the number of days on our calendar reaches one full day after roughly 1,134 years. Given that the nearest multiple of 11 to 1,134 is 1,133, we could skip the leap year every 1,133 years, resetting the discrepancy back to almost zero. So now that we have solved this issue, let's move on to the calendar's months. When deciding how the Kerbal calendar's months should be structured, we're left with a choice. Do we use the moon or Minmus for determining the months? The obvious answer would seem to be the moon, but it's not that simple. For one, the moon orbits Kerbin roughly every 6.5 Kerbin days, which is way more frequently than our moon orbits the Earth. If we use this and this alone for our calendar, there would be over 65 months in every Kerbal year, which, to put it frankly, is way too many. So what if, instead, we use Minmus to determine the length of each month? Dividing the synodic orbital period of Minmus by the orbital period of Kerbin, we get roughly 7.5 months in each year, which is much more manageable than having 65 months for the moon. From there, we could structure the calendar into seven 57-day months, but that's where we run into a problem. We have an extra 27 days left over. Making these extra 27 days into their own month would be possible, but seems a bit strange to do in my opinion. So what if, instead, we distributed these extra 27 days among the 7 months? Upon doing this, we end up with months that are 60 to 61 days long, which, while consistent, does not accurately reflect the synodic orbital period of Minmus. So, neither the Moon nor Minmus appear to be suitable to base the months of the Kerbal calendar off of. 
But what if we think outside the box a little? What if, instead of a month being every single orbit of the moon, we made each week one lunar orbit, while each month was four? In this case, after crunching the numbers, we see that there would be roughly 16 months in each year. Given that the synodic orbital period of the moon is roughly 6.5 Kerman days long, we'll make each week 7 days long, as they are on our calendar. Dividing the number of days in a Kerbal year by 16, we see that there would be either 26 or 27 days in each month, or in other words, 10 months with 27 days, and 6 months with 26 days. On a leap year, an extra day could be added to one of the months with 26 days. Maybe a little something like this. Thanks for watching.